Now we're going to do use the Security ML Library. This is a wonderful thing I just learned about recently. SecML is another library. It is intended to be a library that makes it a Python library for the security evaluation of machine learning algorithms. It is supposed to make it easy to understand the security consequences. So first we have to install SecML. So I'm going to um, run this and I'm going to move this stuff down so I can see my notebook behind it. So there's my notebook. So this it's not included by default, so you have to use pip to install it and then import it. So it's going to do that. Okay, there it is, looking up and uh, figuring out whether it's already got it. Maybe I didn't need to do the pip install. Anyway, it works. There, it's installed it. All right, now... I'm going to prepare a data set. Now this time we're not we're going to use a totally artificial data set um, just to make a very simple machine learning problem. So the data set here is going to be just randomly placed dots in a plane. And so we're going to have three clusters of dots, one at coordinates minus two zero, one at two minus two, and one at two two, and they're going to have a Gaussian distribution with a standard deviation of 0 0.8. And it's going to create uh, 1,250 dots, it'll use 1,000 to train and 250 to test. So if you run it, it's going to plot them out so we can see what we're doing here. It does a bunch of calculation, and then it's going to make a graph. There's a graph. So this is what we're trying to do here. We're creating input data, which is in a two-dimensional input, X and Y, and we're trying to label it by color. This is one group, this is another group, and this is another group. So the model is going to have to decide what the boundaries are here and what region of this to color with the three colors. So this is a, uh, a very, the simplest, sort of the simplest possible machine learning problem or close to it. So we're going to use a thing called a support vector machine to do this. This is the type of model you use. And here's a couple slides from a uh, presentation about this. So if you had this kind of problem where you had do red dots and green dots, you could use either of these two lines, and they both be 100% right, right? So how do you choose which one is the better model? Your machine, it's not unique. Anything that has the reds on one side and the greens on the others would do. So the support vector machine does this. It chooses the line that has the widest margin between the gaps of the data. So this, this turns out to be very easy to calculate because the only thing that matters is the nearby dots. You don't need to do the whole data set. So this is what a support vector machine model is called. It does this kind of model to separate data. And in real learning models like the one with the real images, this is happening in a hyperspace for 784 dimensions. But here we have it in two dimensions just to understand it. So here's we can create and train the SVM model with a special S classifier SVM function in that library. <coughs> so here's the data. Here's the code that will train an SVM model and tell us how accurate it is. So let me go back to here, and let's run this code. All right. And everything will run pretty fast because we're just working on a nice, simple... All right, so there we are. Um, the accuracy is 98.8% on the test set. So we were able to fit it pretty well, and it's easier to understand if you plot it. So here's the visualizing plot, so we can see what the model did. All right, so what the model did, let me shrink it down so it fits on the screen. All right, so here's the data, the green, red, and blue. Here's the lines the model created the borders, and so anything within this region, it called it red, so I got a couple of them wrong, it called these all green, called those all blue, and you can see the accuracy is 98.8%. So this is the result of our training. Now, um, let's try to perform an evasion attack. We've talked about this before. An evasion attack is where you take a test image, now that you've trained the model, and you add some noise to it, and in more complicated situations, like a real image, you can add noise that doesn't seem to do much harm at all, but totally fools it. And in another, in the case where it's identifying these animals, this one was identified as a panda, but after adding that much noise, it's identified as a gibbon instead. And we're going to do this one 
in the next project. But right now here, we're only working with this two-dimensional model, so all we can do is move a point. We can't really change like the one pixel in an image because the only thing we have is location of these points as input data. So this is what performs an evasion attack. There is an algorithm, there are actually several of them that have been developed by computer scientists to figure out the most efficient way to poison the data. So what it does is it starts with a data point where it is and then it uses the model to figure out which way to move it to bring it closer to some other border. And as quickly as possible, tries to move it out of there so it'll get wrong. So it tries to figure out the most efficient way to poison the input to cause the model to misclassify it. And that's what this does. This performs one of those gradient descent kind of algorithms that will calculate the best poison. So we'll add some code here. All right. And what this is going to do, by the way, let me explain a little bit of this code. There's two kinds of perturbation called 11 and 12, and I can't get any, understand what the difference is. But anyway, we're going to start with test set number five. So we're just going to take the fifth dot in the test set, just arbitrarily, to be the input, and we're going to modify it. And we're going to move it a maximum distance of 0 0.4. And it's going to go through several rounds of calculation to calculate the best way to poison. And here's the answer. The best poison is to move it up here. And that took six evaluations of the gradient. So six iterations of the gradient descent model moved it up here. And of course, it's going to be misidentified as green now. So that's a poisoning attack. And I think there are some flags to find here. Now we can do a security evaluation. This is kind of fun. We can now take that maximum distance that we move it and vary that and see how effective the poisoning attacks are as a function of the total distance we move the the dot. And so, we'll get a graph here. It's going to do something like 10 levels of poisoning and evaluate the accuracy of the model for each of them. So it's 13 seconds. Takes a little while, not very long. You can see it up here. It's going to go start at 0, stop at 1.1, and go by steps of 0 0.1. So it's going to move that uh, maximum distance in those steps. And here we are. It's e now it's evaluating it. So we have done all of that. Right, OK. Oh, I guess all the work is being done here. It's doing a security evaluation on each one of them in an array, all in a single Python command. So we're down to here. As you expect, so it took a whole minute of calculation. I know it's not very long, it might be two or three minutes. I would have warned people if it took longer in the project. Let me check my instructions. Um, yep, I didn't bother to mention anything because it didn't take that long. When I did it here, it took three minutes. Okay, so maybe I'll just, here's the answer. Maybe I won't wait for it. So here's the answer. It's um, essentially 100% perfect if you don't poison it. Poison it by 0 0.1, 0 0.2, and 0.3. So poisoning it between 0.2 and 0.3 gets it down to 50% correct, and then more poisoning makes it more incorrect. So this is a way to measure the quality of your learning model, its resistance to poisoning. You see how much poisoning it can take before the error falls to a specific level. And so there's various flags to find here. Um, try different models, different amounts of training. There are different ones to find here. So that's what I wanted to show you there. And... Let me stop this one.